in Botticelli's mystical nativity, we see before us a Renaissance painting, a classic Renaissance painting, a Botticelli, for heaven's sake. But on the other hand, what we could easily miss because of false conceptions of the Renaissance is a focus on the human form and excellence in technique and execution in art and a move, movement away from the merely iconographic or liturgical uh, context of, of sacred art. This would be a mistake because this painting shows all of the deepest sensibilities of what we would normally identify as medieval. It focuses on the apocalypse, that's the inscription at the top, the biblical significance of current world events between Florence and France and so on. We can't go on all the details, but the painter was very conscious of this and he relates the painting to uh, the eighth chapter of the apocalypse and the fulfillment of those prophecies in his own time. He was expecting a revelation and an appearance, if not the second coming, at least a fulfillment of very serious spiritual themes. And so we have heaven, we have hell, we have the saints, we have the apocalypse, we have all these themes which we normally would associate with the late Middle Ages, but actually are right there very strongly and beautifully presented in this quintessentially Renaissance painting. In this painting, we're shown, of course, at the center of the painting, the Holy Family, the Nativity, with the kings on one side and the shepherds on the other. And that's the focal point of the painting. However, surrounding it is this tremendous amount of, of movement, both emotional movement and physical movement, a descending heaven of 12 angels who are descending upon the creche, and below, angels who are embracing these three men who are obviously being sorely tried as the demons slither away under their feet back into the bowels of the earth. An altogether dramatic scene. At the top, you see the 12 angels. They're carrying ribbons which have written on them, you can't, you can't see it very easily from the painting, different titles of privileges of the Blessed Mother, 12 of them. Her predestination, her divine maternity, her conception, and all of her other privileges. So there's this heavenly celebration which stands as a, an expression of the joy of all creation heavenly and earthly, in the childbearing of the Virgin Mary. Even the child Jesus is looking up at Mary with, her hand, with his hands extended towards her. She is actually the focal point of the painting, even though she looks at him with intense concentration. This painting then shows us, both in its vertical movement and in its horizontal movement, the intersection between the earthly and the heavenly, the human, the angelic, the divine, and the created. It's a presentation of an entire context which is all inclusive. That is, there isn't an aspect of the universe God created or God himself or any of his creatures which is not in some sense implied. Heaven, earth, under the earth. All surrounding the virginal childbearing of Mary and her son and all heavens focus upon her as she performs this marvelous task and we celebrate it. That's the original inspiration of the Christmas feast, in fact. It was originally a feast of the childbearing of Mary, her maternity, and only later became focused almost entirely upon the birth of her son. But in such paintings as Botticelli's Mystic Nativity, we see uh, the more traditional view, the more ancient view, and also the more comprehensive one, because God becomes man so that all creation can be bound up uh, in the accomplishment of this great fact, and uh, in this way, God has given glory and there's joy given to men and angels as they, they encourage each other, console each other, and celebrate together the marvelous birth of the Savior of a pure virgin. Botticelli's mystic nativity shows us not simply the heartwarming and beautiful and familiar scene of our Lord's birth at Bethlehem, but it shows it in its relation to the heavenly life, the life of the angels, and also human need and affect, consolation and spiritual struggle. And so everything is in this painting, angels, demons, men who are tried, and men who are wrapped in silent adoration of the Word made flesh and of his blessed mother. It is my great hope 
that by contemplating this picture, you will be drawn to participate in the exaltation and the reverence of the angels and men whom we see surrounding our Lord's nativity, that we will have a reaction in our own heart which is one of devotion and of confidence and of joy and of consolation.